Hello, and welcome to the Admin Bar, episode 18, where the topic today is building a better agency through outsourcing. And we have, uh, I think, our first repeat guest uh, back from like episode two. You might know him from that or other appearances such as the uh, Supercharger Web Agency Group. Mr. Chris Castillo is with us today. So hello, Chris. What's going on, guys? We're good. We're glad to have you on the show today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Glad to be here. And of course, with us is my co-host, Matt Siebert. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing well. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing awesome. You know, in fact, uh, I, I, I should have emphasized the word co-host because I believe there is a coup happening in our group right now. Uh, there's a mutiny happening where they want Matt to take over most of the talking duty in the show. So I think maybe we should just start that right now. Well, let's go for it. Yeah, I mean, we, we can try that, but uh, Kyle's just, he's better on the, uh, on the, uh, the, like the quick uptake. His brain works faster <laughs> in conversation than mine does. I just blab a lot, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah so I don't true. want anybody to think that uh, we haven't addressed this before, because I often tell Matt to talk more often. So it's not just <laughs> me uh, thinking I'm better. It's Matt telling me I am. So yeah, <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, you got to be better at something. That's true. That's true. Well, let's get on to the topic at hand today. We're going to be talking about building a better agency through outsourcing and kind of all week long in the admin bar, we've had uh, topics and discussions talking about outsourcing. And it's funny how many people came back and said, oh, man, this is this is perfect timing. You know, uh, I think uh, Oliver came in and said something. He was writing a blog post or something about outsourcing. Uh, Mike Killen just uh, put out a really good YouTube video about kind of his process on outsourcing. So it's been a good topic this week and we've had a lot of good discussion about it. Um, so we're having Chris on today because Chris is actually in the process of launching a pretty awesome platform that is going to really help solve some problems that I know I personally have with outsourcing. So we're definitely going to dive into that. It's called Outsource Services. You can go to Outsource dot services to check it out right now what uh you still on on track to be fully operational on the first mark of uh, first of march chris yeah that's the goal is to be um opening registrations up for march 1st i was originally gonna be um announcing the winners of the free premium listing giveaway on the 7th but i think i'm actually going to be moving that up either to the the launch date or just before that to give the the winners opportunities to go in and, and uh put up their listings and get all their information up so that it's it's live for when we open up registrations but other than that though the aim is to be uh opening everything up on march 1st so we're on track for that so far That's so awesome. can people still sign up to try to get their uh their free license is that still going on yeah we're i think i'm probably going to close that down uh by this Friday. So yeah, definitely get in there before then because it, it'll be closed down by then for sure. Okay. We'll make sure we post a link in the show notes so you can go in there. Uh, you know, we'll get more into it towards the end of this episode, but there are free listings and premium listings and you get to do a lot more with the premium listing and Chris is giving away 20 of them. So you might as well get in there and try to get, uh, get your hands on it. So anyways, we got quite a few things to talk about in the world of outsourcing today. So uh, I've uh, had some hits and misses, and I think as everyone does when they try to outsource things. Wait, 20 Chris has been so outsourcing uh, quite a bit of work, I think, for his agency, and he's found some uh, successful things. So we're going to go through kind of the advantages, the drawbacks, the tips, the tools, and, and all that. So first, I want to talk about, you know, uh, I want to ask Chris, why, why is outsourcing important for businesses like ours especially you know like uh places like me and matt and and you you're the only one in the room you know you might have some partners and stuff like that but uh you're the only one in the room so why do you think outsourcing is so important yeah it's <clears throat> it's super important i don't think i could be doing what i'm doing right now without having had uh proper suppliers in place because it's just i mean i'm a one-man show for the most part <clears throat> um and so it's it's super important for for a small business like when you're starting out to be able to pr provide all the or cover all the different skill sets that you need to sort of you know have down right so uh for me you know the areas that i've outsourced the most in would have to be things like copywriting which i don't like to do uh graphic design which i started doing on my own with the help of kyle <laughs> and um you know i just i it, it was just a matter of it, 
the better use of my time. And so, although I could do it, it was just taking up so much of my time that I could be using more efficiently on growing the business. So I outsourced that. And then <clears throat> more recently, I outsourced um, the, some, some sales activities as well. And that's working out pretty well for me. Right now, I've got uh, about $74,000 worth of proposals out in the pipeline. So that was in contrast to zero dollars uh, January. So it's definitely helped out quite a bit. But um, there's a whole bunch of catches and caveats to be able, being able to have something like this in place. And I'm still working through some of them, right? It's kind of like an ongoing learning experience and you have to continue to manage everything uh, to, to direct everything in the direction that you, you, you need it to go in. But one of the things that, that just to kind of segue, one of the things that I wanted to, to, to do quickly is because outsourcing is such a broad topic, right? Like you can really start getting into all sorts of things. And um, one of the things that I'd like to do is sort of invite every, anybody who's watching to drop any questions, specific questions that you have about or outsourcing. If there's a, a situation that you ran into that you didn't know how to deal with, or you just don't know how to get started and you just want some direction, just drop a comment in the, in the, in the chat. And we'll try, I'll try to address those down the road in this Facebook Live. But, you know, I really wanted to try to cover some of the more um, practical aspects of outsourcing that people are actually running into. So I did get some feedback feed, feedback, feedback from my group. And, and so we'll, we'll cover some of those, I guess, in this, in this live. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it's super important. And I think um, it, it for, you know, you really have sort of two options, right? You can either do everything yourself, you can outsource the work, or you can hire internally. And that's always been sort of like the the ongoing debate is which of those three things do you do? And, and obviously doing everything yourself is never really one of the major contestants. It's always between outsourcing and hiring internally. Uh, and I'm like, and I'm even between, even for myself, I'm, there's, there's times where I battle as to like, you know, is, is now the time to hire internally? You know, I have $74,000 worth of deals on the line. Is, is now the time to hire? Because if if all those deals start to close, I'm screwed. Or, you know, can I handle that volume with the outsourcing uh, suppliers that I have in place? And so there's always this kind of battle, right? Like, when is the right time to do whatever, right? Whether it's outsourcing or hiring internally. Uh, and you just kind of have to figure that out. I think you have to have some sort of like a plan in your head about how you're going to execute that. Yeah, and I think that's that's super important. I know, like, for myself, the first kind of outsourcing I did um, – I, I somewhat vetted the person, but not a whole lot. And then I sent them an entire job and was just like here with like a shitty brief and like nothing what they needed. I just saw their portfolio. portfolio. They did good work. I said here, you know, uh, and I felt like that was enough to get them going. And they gave me the work back and I hated it. And I said, thank you very much. And I paid them their money. And then I redid the whole job, you know, so it like soured me right away on it. And I've kind of dipped my toes back in and I found something really, really small that I can outsource. Um, that's something I just don't like to do. It's, you know, I could make more money doing other things and that's writing page titles and meta descriptions. So I found somebody that was good at it uh, and I didn't want to do it and I've just outsourced it. So now every single project, I've just built it into the proposal that I know I'm going to have to uh, pay somebody to do that part of it. And I've hired that person probably six or seven times now and been super thrilled with the results. So I think that's that's one thing too. Like if you're nervous about it, you don't have to jump in with both feet. You can, you can kind of dip your toes in the water and kind of see which kind of things work for you and finding the right person. Because I think that's, that's one of the drawbacks, you know, like I explained, I ended up eating a job and doing it anyway. So there's there's quite a few drawbacks that that go with outsourcing and part of that's finding the right people and i yeah, can um, i can add to that too because kyle i found you primarily like my my one reason for finding you was uh was to outsource to you and uh on the opposite side of that spectrum i stopped outsourcing to you not because you don't do good work but because we're so similar that uh it would benefit my business and yours more had we teamed up, which is exactly what we did. And I mean, by doing that, yeah, I'm still outsourcing to other people. But um, but, you know, just uh, the way that Kyle and I work together, it, it benefits our business in just that way, too. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, uh, you know, it's one of those things you you found me fairly quickly, but then that didn't really work out 
in like you had it planned you know what i mean no, so i think one of the biggest drawbacks people have is finding the right people to team up with so there's there's websites out there like you know upwork and fiverr and all these play people per hour where you can you can hire people but the the vetting process is not very good mm -hmm. so um so Chris, what, what have you seen? Cause I'm sure you've used some of those services. What have you seen? Like what, what are those drawbacks at trying to find people in places like that? One of the, when I first, one of the first outsourcing uh, activities that I, I, I looked into was the graphic design side of things. And my first place to look for people when was to go on, to jump on Behance, right? I went to Behance and I started looking up the profiles and you get a lot of, uh, good work that you can kind of find through there, but um, it, it's hard. You don't really get a whole lot of information with a business. Like, are they just an individual um, and, and things like that? Do they have other skill sets? Like what skills do they have? And it's really hard to under, to know, can they just do, you know, a logo or can they do other stuff? Right. Yeah. And another thing, like a lot of those people, it's like work they did for school as part of their portfolio and stuff. And so it's a lot different just being yeah. an artist and creating logos and then actually having to do it for a company, like for work, you know, that's a whole different skill set, really. Right. And yeah, trying and to I, judge like what, uh, what their process is, you know, like how they go through their work because i mean when you're outsourcing and you're giving somebody work you need to be speaking in their language you know they need yeah. to understand what you need and what you want and yeah. you know what you want you know what you need but you need to be able to convey that to them in the same way that you know they they'll get the most out of that um so that's that's definitely another thing too which you're not going to see you know just based on a portfolio yeah and in other platforms like fiverr or upwork I mean, there everybody knows that's sort of like the bottom of the barrel type stuff, and it's and you can literally it's like rolling a dice, um, and you have no idea what you're going to come out with on the other end. Um, so there's a lot of risks in in, in outsourcing to those platforms. Um, and I haven't tried you know people by the hour or any of these other ones. Um, where I've gotten my graphic designer from was a, a platform called OnlineJobs.ph, and that was a grueling process to find somebody. I think I went through about like 80 different uh, people that had contacted me. I reduced it down to a list of 10. I reduced that down to a list of five. I reduced that down to, I think, two or three. And of the three, I fired two of them. One of them I fired twice. The other one I fired once. <laughs> and then the other guy, I did almost you, wait, fired. I'm sorry, I, but did you hate him that much that you like you fired him and then you said, oh, I'm just kidding. Come, come back. No, you're fired again. No, actually, what the one the only one that I that I gave a second chance to she gave me she I, I we had I had onboarded her to the point where she was in my Slack channel. I gave her assigned her a project. I um, I gave her a specific task to do and when I wanted them to be done by. And then she just went radio silent and I didn't hear from her for 48 hours. And I said, okay, look, literally day one, I can't, I mean, that's just, that to me is a huge red flag. So I, I actually kicked her off the Slack channel, messaged her privately. And I said, this can't happen. Like in communication is so important. Right. Um, and so she came back and said, you know, she told me that her grandfather had passed away and that you know, this, some things happened. And I'm, and I had that in the back of my head, like, you know, you never know what, what's going on in people's lives. And I don't try to be a person that's like, just, you know, completely blind to that kind of stuff. So, and I, I try to be really understanding about that. So I said, you know what, like, sorry for everything that you've gone through, like, come back, let's give this another shot. And then she went radio silent again for, with me. So I'm just like, yeah, that. <laughs> her other grandpa uh, died. Matt Can Davies on this, the uh, time, this like, same topic uh, just said that we had a chap whose grandmother died uh, three times. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so just things like that. And it was it was pretty tough. And even the guy that I have working with me right now on an almost full-time basis, um, I ran into some issues with him also, but we've worked through them. You know what I mean? And like one of the things that, you know, Kyle, you said about how you for when the first thing that you outsourced, you handed it off to somebody and you thought that they had enough and then you were disappointed. And I honestly think that is like 99 percent of what people experience <clears throat> because they don't realize. And, and that's one thing that I've learned is when you outsource to somebody, you have to treat them like a brand new employee in your company. you got to train them almost on everything that you do and you have to get them uh, 
like to a certain degree all incorporated into your own company culture, like how you do things, how you approach things, the quality standards, the communication standards, um, all of that stuff has to be very clear to them because they have a completely different way of running their business. Right. And it may not be what, how you do your, your stuff. Right. <clears throat> and then on top of that, you know, when you communicate something to somebody, you expect that, you know, they have the experience to know that like read between the lines in a brief or something. And it, you just, you're, you're essentially just taking risks at that point. You're, you're not, a, um, you're taking the chance that they're not going to fully understand what you need. And it's not like the end of the world. Cause really, even with, with your experience, Kyle, I'm sure that you probably could have gone back to him and said, listen, like, you know, these are the things that I don't like. And then it just would have been this long winded back and forth thing till you were finally happy. So it either results in you redoing everything or this drawn out process that screws your timelines and, and all that other stuff. And so it, it, it's a learning process of working with other people. Uh, but I think it's sort of a challenge that you find in whether you hire somebody internally or not either. Right. I mean, I don't think it's any different. You just gotta, you just gotta, I think, treat it the, the, the same way or similarly. Right. right? And I, I do want to talk about some of those things, like some of the things you learned and kind of some tips for people to use. And one really good one that was brought up this week, uh, Jim Galliano talked about uh, recording videos for people. And that's something that he's talked about on his podcast a lot. Like he does that for customers and stuff like that. And it's something I've started implementing in the first few times felt kind of weird. And now it's, I almost rather just turn on the on, turn on Loom and record a video for my customer than write them a long email trying to explain something because it's so much quicker. So, you know, that's kind of what he brought up about when you're working with outsource vendors is record a video of the process or, you know, uh, you know, walk them through everything you're needing. So what kind of other tips have you learned along the way that we can uh, we can use and try to avoid some of those pitfalls? Yeah, one of the things that has helped me quite a bit is making sure that we that I have a, a proper collaboration um system in place so before things were when i first started things were very broken and i had google docs but i had like it would just i would just grab a share link and then i would share a certain document uh, and blah 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 and we kind of keep doing this uh, over and over again and then we'd have a list of all these links but i'd have to go back and try to find the link and all this other stuff um i've switched completely over to doing everything through google drive and every outsourcing partner that I have, I have a, a folder specifically for them. I share that entire folder and all the subfolders and files with them. And so they have an, access to the entire structure. And then we have a proper structure in place to organize projects based on whatever that particular uh, work entails, right? So if it's graphic design, there's going to be different folders, right? Things for wireframing or whatever. If it's copywriting, it's for drafts and final copies or something. So it's, it's, it's that kind of stuff when you have a proper structure in place so that it avoids going back and forth and then having information get lost. That's helped quite a bit. And then the other thing that's helped me quite a bit has been to organize uh, a video call sort of like this where we can kind of catch up once a week or once every couple of weeks or even just once a month and just get on the same page about everything that's going on. If we have like five projects on the go, okay, where are we with this project? Where are we with this project? Why has this particular project slowed down? What are the challenges there and how can we overcome them? And it's just like what you can get out in a 10, 15 minute video call will take you hours by email to, to, yeah. to resolve, right? And so it's just like, it's just so much more efficient and and, and the communication is a lot clearer, right? And, and with with outsourcing, especially because most of the time you're not going to be in the same geographical location, um, that communication is super important. And so, um, well, and I, I would probably say the last thing too is is I have uh, established communication periods throughout the day. So I say within w within these hours, you need to be available to communicate on projects that we're working together on. Uh, that way, I know that they're available, and and I can and we can collaborate during that time. How, Outside of those hours, I leave them alone, and I don't. I wait until the next availability uh, to to work to to communicate back and forth on those things. So, those are the three things that have helped me out quite a bit, uh, and and I think uh, could probably help other people out. Yeah, and, and if anybody didn't see, I posted a link in the group uh, to Michael Killen's video that he put out this week. Um, you can look in the group, or you can look at uh, look up sell your service on YouTube, and you know that's kind of one thing. 
Yeah. Subscribe. Uh, yeah. Any video he puts out is pretty gold. So, um, you know, that's one thing he talked about in there was having like regular meetings, you know, at the beginning of the week, the end of the week or something, kind of talk about all the projects that are going on, especially if you have so much ongoing work like that with them. I think that's pretty important. Yeah. And especially when you have multiple people working on the same project, you know, like I, I've had, um, video calls with my graphic designer and my copywriter because at the end of the day the copy the copy guy needs to know what the graphic designer is thinking and vice versa and having everybody sort of combine them and then work all the all those kinks out in a single video call can can really help to to streamline your your projects right um yeah i haven't watched mike's video yet but it's on my uh, uh, to watch list on youtube Get to it. It's a good one. He he has a really cool system in there that kind of talks about how you can break up some stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a good watch. So we did touch on a little bit of the, you know, through the those tips you gave us, we talked a little bit about the tools you're using. So uh, Google Drive being one of them uh, to kind of organize those files. How are you doing your video conferences? What are you using for that? Um, Zoom mainly. Um, if, if, uh, yeah, it really it's it's all always done just through Zoom. I don't really use anything else. Um, the other the other tool that I, I've I've used that I think uh, could be beneficial or that's helped me out is um, let me see if I can find it here. It's a tool called it's a time tracking uh, tool, and it helps me to just get people. I mean, I don't use it to like invoice my my suppliers or whatnot. It's just mainly um, it's called Jibble. That's what it's called. Jibble. Jibble.io is the URL. I'll drop it in the um, in the chat, but it's basically uh, just t- time tracking. So it's really it's inexpensive time tracking software. It, it does the trick for me, and basically it's just a way for for me to be able to get an idea of whether people are working or not. Like I don't care whether they put in five hours in, in a day or ten hours in a day. My, what matters more for me is that the projects are getting worked on and that they're getting completed, and I have a a, a, a structured you know payment or salary in place for, for them. And I don't really count the hours towards their salary. I have a fixed price that I pay for them and I pay them on a, on a regular basis, regardless of what that time tracking software says. I just use it as a way of um, making sure that they're at least doing the work that I'm asking them to do. And it also lets you, uh, it let, lets them check into different projects so they can check into, um, you know, a particular website project, and then they can check out and check into a different project so that you know how they're allocating their time and how they're bouncing around between projects. So if you see that they're, you know, one day they're bouncing around between four projects, maybe you can tell them, you know, try working on just two at most or work on one and then move on to the next. It just gives you some extra little a bit of control and, and insight into how people are working. So I, I like that tool and it's helped me out uh, quite a bit, mainly on the graphic design side of things. Yeah, and Beth, uh, Beth Livingston that was on last week when we were talking about project management, you know, she talked about knowing how much time you're spending on stuff and how important that is. And that's just good for you knowing next time how to quote things, you know, so I think that's yeah. important too. Yeah. I, sure. So I, I think, you know, it's kind of one of these things, Matt, you got some dad there. It looked like you were about to talk. Well, I'm not going to add, it's a, it's a segue into something else. So if you're okay. on the same topic, go for we it. Can move go forward. for it. Okay. So um, one the of the things that... You to talk. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I found, uh, especially when I first started outsourcing, was um, the lack of, of control, I guess. Um, the uh, the thing that it, it took me probably over a year, if not longer, to uh, to be like, okay, with the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm hiring somebody out to create a, a poster, a, a logo, like whatever it might be. And what they deliver me is probably going to be good. You know, if I'm keeping them on, then then they're producing good work, but it's not going to be exactly what I would have done. And for the the first several years of my business, everything that I produced was done by myself. Yeah. So I had full control and I knew exactly why, how, where, when, like everything about every project. And the fact that I had to relinquish all of that. And, you know, there's there's still the, you know, the rounds of revisions and the proofing and, and all of that. But uh, in, the, in the very end, it's not going to be your creation and you have to be totally okay with that. You know, and that's, that's yeah. one of the reasons why when you're, when you're looking for people to outsource to, um, you know, if it's a graphic designer, for example, you're trying to find somebody that's, <laughs> like their skill set is far beyond your own 
Um, especially if you're just going to be, you know, running your agency, you know, that's what you're good at. You're good at the sales, maybe you're good at this and that. And your team should be better than you. At yeah, their, their, their I, tasks. I, I somewhat disagree with that, but I, I see what you're saying. And I, and I know the whole like relinquish control thing is, is sort of on everybody's mind when they do, when they do go to outsource. The reason why I somewhat disagree is because I think like nobody's going to be Matt, right? Nobody's going to be as good as you. Nobody's going to do your work to the level and, and, and pay that much attention to detail as you do. <clears throat> it's kind of like, you know, I, I think of it like the future, right? When, when the future, well, what's, what's his name? Uh, the guy that Christo. runs. Yeah, Christo. You know, when he hires a graphic designer, they're, they're, he's not hiring better than him, right? Because there really isn't much people, many people that are better than Christo. But what he's doing is he's hiring people who have the capacity to be on that level. And one of the things that I've realized with outsourcing, like I'm not a super creative, like I'm not, not that I'm not a super creative guy. I'm, a, I'm not super good at like actually building up the designs efficiently. I can build it a probably a pretty good design if I'd spent a whole year doing it, but also like the creativity in my head, I can, I know what makes a good design and I can, I can actually do really good, like creative direction, but I can't actually execute it. So what I do with my graphic designer, and this is one of the things that I think a lot of people lose sight of is you're not actually losing control. You still have that level of control. You just have to be willing and, and accept that you're going to have to be doing a lot of cre uh, of direction, right? Like with my graphic designer, um, we spent on, on a recent project, we spent, I don't know how many back and forth getting this design to the point where I was happy with it. And it wasn't that like he wasn't doing good work or whatever. It was just, I knew the direction I wanted to go with it, right? And it took a while for me to communicate that and for him to understand and for him to put that into an actual uh, concept. Yeah, and that, and that kind of circles back to the conversation we had earlier about, you know, just being able to communicate well with the people that you're you're hiring on. Because, yeah. I mean, that's, that is paramount. It really is. Yeah. You're not face to face with these people. Zoom is great, but, you know, it, it's how people talk to each other and... You know, they, they could be a phenomenal, you know, worker, but if you if you're like missing that basic communication level, then it's probably just not going to work out in the long run. 100 percent. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and the thing is, like, one of the reasons why I ended up keeping the graphic designer that I have on board right now with me is because I know he's coachable. Like, I know I can tell him this is what I need. And I can like if I work, if I, I can kind of mold him and I and, and get him to do to to head in the right direction for a project. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do that in an efficient way for future projects. And, I th and it's just a learning process. And it's just like any other. If, if you were to hire an employee, it'd be the same thing. You'd have to mold them, train them. And then eventually they be become your star employee that delivers, you know, without, with minimal direction, minimal uh, supervision and all that other stuff. Um, and I think it's the same sort of thing with any outsourcing partner. If you were to hire a copywriter and the first bit draft that they send you, it's not, it's like just nowhere near your standards. If you just stop there, you're probably going to end up hitting the same sort of scenario with every single copywriter. You have, you have to sort of <laughs> give back some feedback, give some opportunity there and, and identify whether they're the kind of people that <clears throat> can communicate, can work with you, are willing to work with you, are eager to like actually make you happy. And, and that when you send them, you know, feedback that they're actually listening and implementing that feedback. If, if they're, if they're completely off the ball, like you send them a request and then they just send you back something that's not even close. Okay. That's when you start seeing some red flags and, and you need to start like addressing that. But if, if you're making progress, you know, you got to remember that it's a relationship and you're going to eventually establish a relationship where they're going to know what you want. You're going to know how to communicate with them so that they give you what you want. And then every project you work on is going to be that much more productive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. Um, I actually, a couple of weeks ago, I had a sit down meeting with somebody that's rather local um, to bring on as a, uh, as like a secondary designer for smaller projects. And one of the questions that I had asked her was, um, like, how attached to you, uh, how attached to your work are you? Um, because, man, when I first started doing this, um, a lot of my work was illustrative, and that's like that's way more like artistic than just layout design. 
And because of that, I was fairly attached to the projects that I was doing. Um, I remember I was doing an album cover for somebody and, you know, we, we went through a couple of uh, proof stages and we got to the, uh, the outline of the whole illustration and they were like, oh, we want to change this and add this and that and this, you know, I just completely like revamped the scope of work. And, you know, of course I, I handled it the way that it should be uh, with like a change order and all that. However, because it is art, I was, I was almost offended. And this was like early in my career, but I was attached to what I was doing. And since then I've got, I've grown a little bit cold to it, not in a bad way, but in a, you know, this is the client's project. This is, you know, it has, it has goals. And that's one of the reasons why I'm dra drawn to web design is because, you know, all of these goals are measurable. Um, but yeah, like I, it's, it's important to, uh, to ask the questions regarding like how they take feedback and how, you know, I don't want to critique somebody's work and have them feel offended by it. And they don't want that either. So if, if they're too attached to their work, it might not be a good mix either. That's a good point. And you definitely want to have somebody who's just out to to deliver on what you want to to deliver to your client right because at the end of the day it is your client right and you need to be able to control uh the output to them <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons one of the one of the reasons why i say that you need to sort of manage everything and direct everything right from the beginning and it's one of the things that i think not a lot of people really do as well as they should because like when i first started out I was outsourcing stuff and the results, like I was just kind of like, okay, they know best. And I, I don't know why I thought this, like, I, like they're the expert. And so, you know, they know best. And so I would deliver that work and say, this is what my so-and-so did. And, you know, this is, this is what's going to produce the results. And then we didn't get results. And I'm like, shit, I should have, I should have, like, I should have, I know, I knew that in my gut that this wasn't right. That. And I didn't, I didn't say anything. I knew that it would have been better to do something like this and I didn't say anything. And then I ended up, my well, client and, and my business ended up paying the price for it. And then ever since then, I've been like clamped down when I work with people. I'm like, okay, I'm the expert. I know what needs to be done. And I just need your skill sets to be able to add on things, right? So to do certain things. And, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I, I direct the entire thing. And it takes a lot of time. I'm not going to say that it's like the outsourcing. I think that's maybe another thing that people don't really realize when you outsource, you're not just like, here you go, <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll call you in a week and then we'll, 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 we'll finish this whole thing up. It's like on a daily basis, you know, or, or a semi daily or like every couple of days or whatever, you're, you're, you're touching uh, points with them and you're, and you're contacting them and making sure that things are going in the right place you're asking them for um progress on how, how things are developing so that you can you can examine things and 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 analyze things and make sure that they're heading in the direction that you need them to go in and it's not like outsourcing is not really meant to just completely free your time up it's meant to free up like half your time so instead of spending 100 percent of your time doing the design i'm spending maybe 30 to 40% of my time directing it, but then I have 60% of that time that I would normally have allocated to do other things. So it's not meant to just be a, like you're not handing things off. You're, you're, you're saving yourself a little bit of time and you're put producing better work. That's sort of the, the goal behind it, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and I mean, think about like, if, if these people were in your space, you know, you would be walking around your office and you would know what's going on because they're not, you do need to touch base with them much more frequently than than maybe like you think is is necessary because you know you you don't know and you need to know what's going on because of that yeah and i think that's that's definitely a problem that i've had too is like you know i was hoping to just say here here you go now i'm going to go away and get all this stuff done and we'll both have everything you know and it it just doesn't work like that so i think I do want to talk a little bit about outsourced services and some of these problems that uh, we discussed and, and kind of your vision for how this platform solves it. So I know uh, when you you talked to me about this, it was the end of last year, November, December, something like that. Um, you know, and I, I want to say I got a sneak peek pretty early. It's it's pretty awesome. Uh, 
<laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things you talked about was kind of the the vetting process, because I think that's where most of us get stuck before we even have all these problems of like, how are we going to use Google Drive and are we going to do Zoom meetings and all these things that are like future problems. You're having the problem with just like vetting these people. And I think that's the hardest thing with like <laughs> Fiverr and Upwork and stuff like that is, you know, there might be some review stars or something, but you have no idea who these people are. You know, you have no yeah. connection to them whatsoever. And so tell us a little bit about how outsource services is going to work a little bit differently than that and and how the vetting process is going to be a little bit more thorough and work a little bit more in our advantage yeah the, like the sort of the vision behind it was and and the whole concept of outsource services it just surfaced through the facebook group and and like everybody people were outsourcing within the facebook group already right like that was already happening and it's happened it happens in a lot of facebook groups that already happens and and i found that people are finding good people to work with um, within that environment, but it's just not, it's not as apparent who's, who, who does what and um, who you can reach out to and things like that. And who's willing to, to actually do white label work versus not white label work and things like that. And so it's like, you know, it works, but we need like a better platform to be able to actually see at a high level who all these people are and how they can potentially work with us. Right. And that was basically where outsource services was born from. And it was like, started off as like a Google doc. <clears throat> and I just realized it was going to be a complete nightmare to manage that. And I'm like, okay, I got to build a system for this because it's just not going to work that way. And so the, if, if you think about that, the, 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 where this idea came from, that's really, how I, I see outsource services fitting into everything is like, you know, <clears throat> you can go on into outsource services. And although their outsource services in and of itself is not going to help you vet and select people a hundred percent, it's there to help as a tool, just like any other tool to help you and give you certain insight and information about businesses to make a more informed decision. You can see where the, where where in the world they're located. You can see what services they provide. You can see, you know, reviews. But the reviews are based off of four critical components of outsourcing, which we've actually covered in throughout this live. Right? We've covered the pricing, the quality of the work. So it's actually, um, uh, I think, price, value, communication, and turnaround. So those are the four things that for us as business owners is like are the most important things. Right? We want to know that. We want to know how much we're, we're going to need to invest. We're going to need to, we want to know, are they going to provide quality work? Or we want to know, are they, you know, are they going to communicate efficiently with us and that they're able to turn around projects quickly for you? So for me, that was having that sort of review system in place is going to ideally help out people so that if I, I like, I've worked with a few people within the Facebook group, as soon as, as soon as their listings are up, are up, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to put in a review and I'm going to let people know what my experience was in terms of all four of those factors, hopefully with the, with the intention of being able to help other people make a better informed decision. Right. <clears throat> also like the whole thing about, we go back to like, like finding a graphic designer, for example, I went on Behance and I found all this portfolio work, but what happens if I need to find a copywriter? I, there is no Behance for copywriters. Right. So, um, there are platforms that you, where you can view portfolios and people's work and things like that, but there, there is no unified platform that does that has that for everybody, right? You'd have to jump into a different platform to figure out what kind of copywriting they do. You have to jump into a different platform to get reviews on somebody who does maybe sales outsourcing or something. And, you know, basically outsource services just consolidates all of those different platforms into one single easy to use system that provides you with the information you need to make those in, informed decisions, right? That's sort of the ideal goal there. And <clears throat> we've made it easy to be able to search for those people based off of the services that they supply. So you can actually just say, you know, give me all the people that do web design or give me only the people that do white label uh, funnel building. And you can find those people very easily. So it, 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 it's a, an efficient, easy to use system. And I think that's really what's going to help to to set, set it aside from other other platforms so that, and i think one of the things that like exciting <laughs> yeah it is uh, i think one of the things that interests me most is like you said like uh you know people do trade work back and forth in these groups and but it's hard you know you get so many people in these groups it's hard to remember exactly who does what and you know if i'm going to outsource something uh you know it's important to me 
I'd much rather outsource it to somebody I already know in the group and somebody I've already had interactions with and they've been around and they help people and I know what they do or, you know, I, I see what kind of person they are, but I might not always put those two things together like this good person and the work that they do. And I think this kind of merges those things together through the community, which is pretty neat. You, 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 you touched on something that I want to actually expand on a little bit because you, you touched on about how, you know, you, you want to work with people that you know, that you've, you've already worked with and that you trust and the community aspect of things. And I think that's one of the reasons why the networking aspect of Facebook groups works so well, right? Is, you know, you and I, we've interacted in groups for like years now. And I, when, you know, when I, when I see, when I first kind of saw you on in the groups, I, I saw the kind of work that you were putting up and I, and I followed you around and stalked you a little bit and, and, you know, and basically, you know, I would reach out to you because I know you from the groups. I'm able to interact with you. I'm able to ask you, you know, if, if I have a question and you respond to my, my question to give me feedback, you've added value to me and that builds trust, right? And so all of these, like all of the networking and social aspects to the group really help quite a bit. And that's one of the reasons why with outsourced services, I wanted to tightly integrate the Facebook networking component with the directory because I find that that is where a lot of the value is. So with all of the directory listings, you're asked to put in the Facebook URL that you use to network with online. The reason for that is because I want everybody who's on the directory in our Facebook group contributing and engaging with people because at the end of the day, I mean, they don't have to do that, but at the end of the day, it works in their benefit because you're going to be able to build those relationships and generate that business for yourself because people are going to see you and they're going to trust you more. Right. And that's, I, I'm exactly with you. Like I'm going to, if I'm going to outsource to somebody, I'm going to outsource to somebody who I know is active on, on these groups who have contributed to other people and, and who, um, because those people are the people that are taking their business a little bit more seriously. I, I, or, I see it. Right. Or even like how many times have you done this when you, when you see somebody new on Facebook or you're checking somebody out or finding out something out about them, you look and see who they have mutual friends with you with, you know? So if I get on somebody's profile and go, Oh man, they're already friends with Chris and Matt. Like they must be at least decent. Like now I already have a baseline. Like if they already know these people, I already feel more comfortable. So pro tip before any of us are listed on outsource services, this just came to me is uh, for your, your photo, your profile on photo on outsource services, make it match the one that you have on Facebook because people are going to recognize you that way. And, and if I just have my little rocket ship on there and uh, people don't associate that with my face, it might be harder for them to realize who I am. So pro tip before we get started. Uh that's a, that's a, that's a really good pro tip, man. I love that. You know, I actually didn't even think about that. And I think I'm probably going to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's so, really good. I like so, that. So tell us a little bit about how people are going to get, you know, I guess there's two ways you can use this platform and you, you might actually use it both ways. So you can use it when you're looking to outsource work and you can also use it to pick up work for your business and, and be like a white label partner for some agencies. So tell us, uh, I know you have a, a, a free option for people getting listed on there and then some premium features. So kind of tell us uh, how that listing works and what the differences are between the free and the premium versions. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to post, I have a video that I already created as part of the onboarding process for outsource services. And, and I'm, I'm actually really eager to get people, uh, give, get people's feedback on the onboarding process because I've worked really hard on it, making sure that it's like as, as smooth, as buttery smooth as I can get it. I got to do like version one of the onboarding and, process and it, and it was, was already great. And it was terrible. I have to admit it was, it wasn't very good, but I, I I'm going to get you to go through that onboarding process again, Kyle, and I'll, I'll get you to, to, to give me your your comparison because I, I know that it's it's a lot better. Yeah, there were a few little bugs, but I mean, this was back in like this was yeah, before it's Christmas. Like, it's it's been a while ago, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, and it was already pretty, pretty awesome. Then. Um, but um, sorry, what what did you ask me? A lot. So so the difference between the free listings and the oh, premium right. listings. So the free so essentially the free listing has quite a bit of stuff in it. Like it, it really does. Um, and I wanted to make it that way because I really didn't want people to not get in there because of a, of a price barrier or whatever. Uh, the the premium listing essentially the the main differentiator between it is you get uh, two other main um, benefits from it. One is you get to add a portfolio gallery to it, so you can add high resolution images for your past work for um, for copywriters, it's a little bit uh, different or for anybody who doesn't do something like visual, they, they, they can still just, you know, 
do a screenshot of a, of a long article that they've written and have it there for people to read um, and things like that. And now the, there is also the ability to add uh, videos to your listing. And I think the video, the combination of the videos and the photos can be really, really powerful because the, you know, like, you know, Kyle, you have a, a pretty, a pretty kick-ass like YouTube intro that you, that you had put together. And like, I, you know, there's a lot of these like sort of cool promotional videos that you can put together to help promote your business. And you can just throw these onto your listing and it could be all sorts of things, right? Like there's really no limit to what you can use video to do to help promote your business. You can have some sort of like a trailer, you can have, you know, um, an ex like a before and after type things like I do with my, with my client projects. You can do all sorts of things and really it's there as a sales tool, as a promotional tool to help um, elevate your listing. Um, there are other features planned in the future for premium listings, but those two, I believe, um, I haven't, I should probably I, know this, but I will, I will say I, I've already been making plans for a video in my listing. Um, you know, I like to be a little goofy, so stay tuned for my video <laughs> listing, uh, my video on my listing. I think it's going to be pretty good. I might need to outsource some editing though. So if you do uh, video editing, let me know. Uh, it will be a fun project. So do you have any, uh, price points set for, uh, for this yet? Yeah. Um, sorry. One, one thing before I get into price, the last thing for the premium listing is you get to connect all of your social profiles to your listing. So for those that are on Behance, you can connect your Behance to your listing so that you don't necessarily have to redo everything that you have somewhere else. You know, throw up some some of your best work on, on outsource services, but then link out to your Behance, link out to your Jibble, link out to your all the other places that you already have a lot of good stuff on. Um, but MySpace. You, yeah, MySpace. <laughs> Um, and so you get, there's like, uh, I think uh, over 20 different social media, social networks that you can link out to, uh, and you can connect all of those different properties there. Um, you also get to add your website URL, which you won't do with your free listing. Um, and for anybody who, who knows uh, the SEO benefits to that, you get some link juice there, which I hope to, to be able to help you out with in the future. And that's again, another thing that I, I wanted to touch on too, is like, you know, this is sort of my my long-term project, right? It's something that I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to definitely grow out, um, uh, you know, f in the future, I want this to be something that really, I, I want, I want to be able to generate, you know, tens or no, or hundreds of thousands of visitors to this site in the future and have this be one of the go-to places for people to find. And it's not just for people like us. I mean, that it's, it's built for people like us who are business owners looking in the same space, but there's no reason why consumers, right? Like other business owners, you know, dentists and stuff like that can't go to outsource services and find people to work with through there. Imagine the power of having another agency v uh, vouch for your business and then a, a, a particular client or prospect coming onto outsource services and seeing that. Like there's powerful social proof in that as well, because they're gonna know that if another agency is willing to trust you with their work and they're willing, willing to vote for you, then they're in pretty safe hands. So that's sort of like the overarching um, goal, the long-term goal for the platform. Right now, the pricing for the premium listing, I've actually reduced it down because I've had to cut out a particular set of features from it uh, that were just a bit of a legal um, uh, liability for me. And I just didn't, couldn't take on that liability right now. And it was essentially the ability to be able to sell your services directly through the platform. Mm -hmm. I need to work a little bit of the functionality out to work around some um, legal uh, ramifications for that. But um, and, and there was there was obviously added value to that and, and, and the pricing was going to reflect that. So I've actually reduced the pricing down to $99 per year for the premium listing. But that's just an introductory price that may end up changing in the future. But I'm going to I'm going to be sticking to that for the first at least for the first um, month or two. Uh, we'll see where it goes after that. But uh, the, uh, the original price point was a 149 per year. Well, I think that's certainly affordable for what you're going to get out of it. So if you do want to go check it out, like he said, uh, looks like March 1st, you'll be able to start claiming listings. You can go to outsource.services. I'll also post a link to where you can sign up uh, to try to win one of those free premium licenses. There's still a little bit of time, I think Chris said, until Friday. So, uh, Chris, I certainly appreciate you coming here and having this discussion with us. And of course, we'll be uh, kind of continuing the discussion. Outsourcing is like a huge topic that I think we we certainly can't cover in a in a in a show of this 
size and we're already like way over on time of what we normally do. So I appreciate all of you for sticking around uh, and make sure you jump in in our group, the admin bar. You can go to the admin bar.com forward slash group if you're not already a part of it and we'll continue this conversation. And Chris has a fantastic group that just hit uh, 2000 members, which is a uh, supercharge your web agency. So check that out if you're not already a part of that. Um, I do have a little bit of housekeeping real quick, if y'all don't mind. Um, one thing is um, something that I've been using for like two years now, uh, Book Like a Boss is on sale uh, through AppSumo right now. Um, I bought this two years ago on AppSumo when it first came out. Uh, I think Lee Jackson had had them on his podcast or somebody did back then and, and I jumped on and bought it and man, I use it for everything. In fact, even my regular clients that uh, I talk to weekly know that if they want to get me on the phone, they better just go book an appointment and they have the link in my signature so they can hop on it all the time. So basically, if you haven't heard of it, it does all kinds of bookings, uh, both paid and free bookings. So if you go to the admin bar dot com forward slash B L A B as in book like a boss. Uh, you can use our affiliate link, which would be super helpful to us. We'll make a couple dollars for it. And it's definitely something that uh, that I use all the time. So I don't mind uh, promoting. I know Chris has actually used my link to book time with me. So how did it work from that end, Chris? It, it was pretty good, man. I, honestly, it um, you know, the, the two main options out there are Calendly and book like a boss. Those are the two that I've found and I've, I've been using Calendly and when, and I've, and I've actually booked with Lee Jackson through his book, like a boss, uh, um, link. And it was like really, really nice experience. And, uh, when you shot me that link for the AppSumo deal, I, I stacked that offer, man. I, I wanted to get, I wanted to get the best, what is it like the, the venti plan or whatever. Right. Yeah, I, I went, I went all out, man. Cause I, I, I definitely have a use for it. I, I, uh, I've been meaning to get the paid version of Calendly, but I haven't pulled the trigger and I'm so glad that I, I held off on that cause I, I got a lifetime deal now. So yeah, I can I back that up and say that, uh, Kyle, um, what was it? Two years ago, book like a boss was on AppSumo. Yeah. Yeah, Something I like missed that. the boat on that one, and I've been regretting it for two years. So uh, Kyle <laughs> shot me a text yesterday, and he's like, "Guess what's on AppSumo?" And uh, I I went out and I, I snagged it immediately. Like it's absolutely no brainer. worth grabbing. Yeah, there's a there's only like a few deals a year on AppSumo that like you can't miss out on, right? Yeah. Like there was SEO Press was one, mm -hmm. and then there was and then like this one's definitely going to be one of them. The one one of the ones that I was like I kind of shoot shoot myself in the foot for not jumping on was the um, Dubsado because I think a lot of people have found a lot of really good use for it. But yeah, definitely I I think this this deal here is like a no brainer. You, you got to go get it. Yeah, I'm waiting no for uh, for better proposals to to hit it again <laughs> that's yeah that's, that's another one really too good. i need that one yeah. i got noosey but i'm not too super happy with it i'm I, I i was on better proposals at one point and then jumped off it when noosey came because i was actually paying the monthly subscription and then i got the noosey lifetime plan but i'm not super happy with it if, if if they come out with another one i'm, I'm all over that one man no doubt. All right. Well, we got to sign off for here. I'm actually in the process of moving. So hopefully next time y'all see me, I won't be in this room anymore. I'll be in a, <laughs> a nice new office and I'm going to be out of here. So I got to get out of here to go, uh, go move some stuff. So I appreciate everyone for jumping on with us today. We had quite a bit of activity going on during the uh, live stream. So we'll make sure to get back there and answer any questions people have. And Chris, thank you for being a rock star guest again. And uh, Matt, you got anything to add? No, well, we covered it. Awesome. Join us next week. We're going to have Adam Lacey on the show talking about his new uh, product, Split Hero, which I'm super excited about and oh, yeah. am an early adopter of. So I'm excited about talking about that. And we will catch y'all on episode 19 next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.